Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This is Cadtrix. Today I will be showing you Lofting in Fusion 360. Now Lofting is a very strange name for creating a transitional shape between two profiles. Now these profiles don't need to be the same shape but in this example they are. So this is just an example I wanted to give an, uh, to show you uh, between two hoses of different diameters. So let's say that you were creating a 3D printed vacuum cleaner uh, downsizing coupler. You could use lofting to do that with ease. So this is the most basic example of a loft between two different profile shapes uh, in Fusion 360. So I'm just going to show you on the section analysis, which just means to take a cross section of what we're looking at. So you can see the loft is this transition between the second profile. So how do we create a loft? That's what I'm going to show you right now. So we're going to create a sketch. Let's just do a circle on the bottom face. Let's just make it something like, I don't know, 100. I'm going to hit D and just give that 100 as it's still blue. And we're going to go finish sketch. Now, to create the second profile with, uh, with some distance away from the original profile, I'm going to use a construction offset plane. We could also just press this button here. And I'm going to select this face and we're going to drag it up by, let's say, I don't know, 100 and press enter. Now we're going to create a sketch on this new profile. I'm going to press C for circle and I'm going to create uh, actually, let's create a square. So I'm going to click on this two point rectangle. I'm going to use the center rectangle. That means we can create it from the origin or this point here. So let's just make this by, I don't know, 40 or 50 by 50. We can press tab to switch between the two text box. So now we have two profiles. So we're going to click finish sketch. And now I'm going to go to create and loft. So I'm going to select the first profile. I'm going to select the second profile. So this is your most basic kind of loft. Now, one of the things you might want is to create a shell. So you can do this with the modify and uh, sorry, you can do this with the shell command. So we can click that and click 2.5. So that's and we might want to select this top face as well by holding control and click the top face. So now we have a hollow shape. But one of the other ways people tend to do this is to, uh, let's say we offsetted the edge of this by pressing O, or we can go down to um, modify and offset. Let's just offset it by 2.5 click finish sketch and let's offset the original sketch so using the history timeline we can click on this one here and press O to offset this edge so 2.5 as well now we click finish sketch now if we go create and loft we can loft between these two edges but the thing you'll notice with fusion which is very annoying is that it doesn't actually loft between this outer edge that we created what we can do to fix that is to go to create loft again. And before we do that, actually, we need to enable the sketches by going in this drop down and enabling the eyeballs. Now, if we go to create and loft, we can loft between this two inner profiles and ensuring the operation is set to cut. But before when we did it, we had it on join. But this time to cut it out, we need to select cut. Let's now click OK. So now we've got the same effect, essentially. So what we can do with the loft, let's go to the original one here. We have the option to change the direction. So before it was just a straight line between the two profiles. But maybe we want to give it some character. For example, we can change the angle how it joins to the second profile, for example. One of the things that, oops, one of the things that was strange, 
Um, let's just leave it there for now. One of the things we can do as well is creating a guide rail. So first I will show you how to create a center guide rail. So let's just create a circle, set this to say 100 and type it in 100 there. Now we're gonna construct an offset plane again. I mean, let's just move it up by 100. Now let's just create a uh, let's create another circle, make it 60. Press D for dimension, type in 60, finish sketch. Now, what we can do is create a sketch on this face here, and using the spline tool, we can just create a simple shape like that, for example, and click the tick. We want to ensure, um, which may not 100% be necessary, but we want, it's probably ideal to make this tangent handle join um, at 90 degrees or perpendicular. So what you can do is go to this tool and click this. As you can see, it's done the opposite thing that we wanted. To fix that, what we can do is Control Z, and what I tend to do is to uh, nudge it more to the of axis we want to align to so that fusion understands it's more likely to want to be vertical than it is horizontal so now if we click off and click on this tool again and select this it will go vertical because it's more likely to be vertical see this looks about 45 so we need to help fusion understand what we are more likely to do so let's nudge it more to be vertical. Now we can use the, the constraints and make it 100% vertical. Now we can finish sketch. Now what we can do is go to create and loft and select our two profiles. And then on center line, we can select our center line. As you can see, we've got self intersection or bad geometry warning. This is because our profile is too, uh, our center line is too, uh, wacky of a shape uh, so we get infinite pinching around this region so to fix that you just need to um, make your spline a little less drastic in angle so let's do that again so go create loft and between the two profiles uh, looks like we've selected something accidentally so create loft first profile and second profile select center line and select our center line. As you can see, it's following our profile. So that is how to create a center line followed loft. One of the other things you can do is instead of a centered line, we can have edge guide rails. So to do that, what we can do is create a sketch on this face and then use a fit point spline and snap from the edges, create our shape to the other edge and I need to note uh, that if you cannot snap to the edges what you can do is go to create and project and then project these two profiles which will give you two points on each of these profiles which you can use on your spline tool to snap to so I'll go to finish sketch and we're going to create a new sketch on this face now what we can do is create a fits point and now we've got our circles from the projection we just did to create the shape we want so let's just create something like that for example and same as before i'm going to nudge this a bit more vertical than actually use the vertical tool um, but we need to make sure we're not selecting the point before we do that so we need to click off and then select the tool and select the tangent handle so this tangent handle is the green thing so we're going to go to the bottom one now and we're going to make this a little more vertical and then select off and then click the horizontal vertical constraint and make it 100 percent so let's say we want it on the other side we don't need to recreate that because we'll never get it 100 percent correct again what we can do is create a line uh, from the center and I'm going to hit X or we can press this key to make it a construction line we're going to use the mirror tool so we're going to select the objects as this and the mirror line as the thing we just created on the middle so that creates a perfect copy 
on the other side. So let's click OK. So now what we can do is click Finish Sketch and go to Create Loft, select this as our first profile and select this as our second profile. But now under Rails, what we can do is select this and select our rails. So it maps correctly to the curves we just created. We can also click on the plus and select, click the plus and click on the rails. Now you can see it maps on this one face, but on the other face it doesn't. Let's say we want it on all four faces. What we can do is go to the sketch where we made our profile uh, splines. We can actually select these by holding control and select the other one and do control C for copy, or we could do right click um, and copy. Now we can go to finish sketch and we can create a new sketch on the other face and we can click control V. For some reason, fusion creates upside down, which is what we don't want. And if we were to rotate it, it would just be a game of getting it in the right place and it's just difficult. So the better way to do that is to go to, um, let me just paste it again. So we're back in that mode again. We go to the pivot and change it from here to this point here. We must remember to click this because if we don't, it's just gonna do this. So if I just um, set that back to zero and click on the tick for done. Now, if we rotate, it will work exactly how you'd expect. So we're going to do 180 degrees uh, negative. So it's so a negative 180 degrees and click OK. So now we can go to finish sketch and then go to create loft. We're going to loft between the two faces and then we're going to select the four rails. So we're going to select this. We're going to select these two as well. So you can see all four rails map directly to the lines. Okay, so one of the things I need to mention is that we can loft between many, many, many faces. So I'm gonna go in the history before, um, actually let's just um, do it in a new document. So on this face, let's make a circle. Uh, we need to make sure it's on the middle and we're going to create something like 50. So we can create a offset plane and let's just do it about, I don't know, 50. And then we're going to do create a sketch on this and let's put a totally different shape. So let's go create um, polygon, circumscribe polygon and select this origin again. And let's just make this, I don't know, uh, make it make them similar sizes but not exactly the same and I'm just gonna actually it doesn't really matter for this example normally I would make this black but I'm just going to leave it as blue at the moment even though it's not a good idea because it doesn't know how it should be scaled but normally this is important but uh, I'm just going to overlook this for now I'm going to create a sketch and go to offset plane I'm going to select this and we're going to offset it by another 50 um, yeah, maybe, maybe a hundred actually. Now we're going to select this profile, select to create a sketch. I normally just press uh, L for like line, which is a bit of a cheap way to do it, but it's the way I'm used to doing it. And then we're just going to create another circle and just make this, I don't know, 30. It's going to press D and make it 30, even though I didn't do this one. I'm going to go finish sketch. So now if we go to create loft, we can loft between these profiles like this. So now we've created a very unique shape by using intermediate profiles that which you don't see directly as the top face. Of course, just like before, we can just do it in a simple way of modifying it like this. Um, we can change the angle and change this to direction as well. You can also get these rails here and move them about, um, but I don't really like doing that myself. So yeah, that's basically an example of using um, lofting in Fusion 360. 
Um, yeah, so thank you for watching this video tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Or if you found it horrendous, please feel free to insult me in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to check out the previous video, if you haven't already, and the next video. Catch you in the next one.